Hello, we're here from the Edison of Drones TV. Um, together, I've got here Stefan Timmerman and Christian Fafonis here. Tony Graham can unfortunately be not be with us today, but today we are um, interviewing the people from RV Jet. Hello, guys. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hey. So, tell me, tell me, what, what did you, how, how did you um, get up with this idea of building this, this, this plane, you know? This Batman looking plane. Yes. <laughs> uh, Bova, should you mention something about because you are like initiating it, so maybe you should start. Yeah, I had a small idea to to make a flying wing. I think it was like um, <laughs> three years ago when when the idea was, and back then there was no X8 or I don't think Zephyr 2 for sure. There was no flying wings for FPV, and the idea was to make a center section from plywood and two foam cores and all the equipment will go in the center. Um, that was the idea and then I met these great guys and we made a totally different project. <laughs> totally blew my mind what we made and two okay, years well, later well, took well, two years. What was this guy's insight into the and design and the creation of this wonderful product of yours? Yeah, it's, it's, could you repeat that? Sorry, I didn't hear. Uh, sorry. Yeah. What, what I was um, saying is, what what is each of yours um, share into the design and creation of this wonderful idea of Vladimir? Well, um, Vova asked me first to um, to design this centerpiece, and uh, I'll take you the backstory, so you then you'll understand everything. Yes, 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 please, yes. please. and. Uh, uh, I was really, really interested. I was on paternal leave, so I didn't know how much time I could put on this. So um, I contacted Anders because I knew he was a friend of uh, of uh, computer design CAD and also a very gifted uh, modeler and flyer. And uh, together we we said to Vova, "Well, let's do this." And uh, Anders started some sketches in CAD and they came up with a really Wild wing, I thought much more than I thought that we uh, should do in the beginning. Yeah. And um, I think from those initial designs, uh, he has been uh, well. All of us have been uh, putting ideas into the project. Uh, I think I mostly have been the airframe modeler or designer, and uh, the guy is not here. Uh, Frank has been uh, the the modeler of the pan tilt, the the plastic god, as I call it. <laughs> the the thing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. and Anders has been uh, build well the builder and flyer, the main flyer and builder and trier and uh, a lot of ideas. Yeah, yeah. I, I have my background uh, within horse modeling. I have my background within building. Uh, planes, building composite gliders for DLG, uh, FDK models, uh, slope soaring models, so I'm uh, pretty comfortable with building large, uh, large planes or models from uh, foam, so that was also something that we did in the beginning, we, we tried to, to turn all these uh, IDs and the CAD the drawings into prototypes that we could test fly. So we had a, a couple of test flights, uh, a couple of prototypes that we tested during a, a certain time before we honed in the, the, the final design, so to say. Yes, and after so, that we had uh, several prototypes with uh, milled, uh, milled from foam uh, prototypes. So the first ones was actually built by hand from Anders. Uh, shaping the foam, and uh, then we had, I, I don't know, did we have four, five, a, a number of uh, prototy milled prototypes with different kind of wings, and uh, uh, airfoil and washout, and uh, we brought a little different to get the characteristics that we wanted. We didn't want the, the top 
edge performer in one category, and we didn't want to have a trainer, and, uh, but we wanted to have a model that would have a really good performance, but still be easy to fly, uh, but it shouldn't really fly for you. Um, I don't like the trainer type of flyers that when you release a stick, uh, it, it flies for you. I, I want, you should be able to fly it yourself. You should control it, but it should still be uh, locked in and stable. And I think we got a pretty good airframe in them. So how did you do that? Did you have um, large elevons or small elevons that you, did you increase the size or was there a, a standard size that you kept to, to get this feeling of your flying and not the plane flying? Uh, on the models, the prototypes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we we did the, the the same size of models, the, the whole design process from the beginning. Now, to to a standard trainer, would you say your elevons is bigger than usual or smaller? Uh, well, the elevons. The, the surface area of your elevons. Yes. yes. Uh, Compared to, well, uh, t compared to a trainer or what? I don't didn't really understand. I, I, I think if you compare it to the same span of a trainer, then they are roughly the same. I should say, perhaps a little bit bigger, but but it it depends on which model you will look at. So it, I don't think it's it's hard to say. <laughs> different models would have different size. So. Well, what, 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 what I try what I try to mean is that you know, you know your 3D planes, which is totally very responsive. It's got huge surface area, um, ailerons, elevons, um, you know? Yeah. Now, once, you, once you go smaller, the, you get more to the trainer level, the smaller area surface. And I, oh, okay. you, yeah. you said that, that um, you, want, you want this um, plane to be more that you feel is flying, not a plane feel is flying. So did you decrease or increase the size of the ailerons? The, the, the area of, um, of the area of Alamon? We found the perfect size, not oversized, not too small, and we adjusted it until it's perfect. So now it's perfect. Okay, so it's not, not, not nothing? Not, not much playing with the, the Alamon sizes, no. Not much okay, adjustment. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, sorry, just, just from my side, what was the designed A speed, um, average A speed? the plane. Sorry, I didn't hear that. Could you? Now, uh, just uh, uh, looking looking at the at the wing, it, it looks like quite a fast, uh, relatively fast, and uh, it seems to be uh, looking stable in in uh, in a bit of the uh, wind speed. But uh, how fast does it fly? Does it fly? Uh, can you fly it throughout uh, low throttle up to high throttle? Uh, how responsive is it? Uh, is there sort of an average that you need to, to maintain? Um, uh, is it was it designed as a, as a type of a three, 3D plane? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. The, it has a quite wide. Um, uh, flight envelope speed-wise, uh, and uh, of course, as you probably know, it has two wing configurations. And uh, if you focus on the short wing, it has the widest flight envelope regarding speed. And uh, when I land it, when I act, the moment before I stall it, I think the speed is uh, the airspeed is around 35 kilometers, maybe. When I touch down, when I stall the last bit. Uh, mm -hmm. And I haven't found really the top speed where it uh, the never exceed speed with the short wing. I've been up to 170 kilometers per hour yet. Uh, I plan on going much faster. Uh, the long wing it is more stable and uh, it has never exceed speed of about 100 kilometers per hour. But it is also designed for loitering, slow, slower loitering. So it's yeah. uh, that's not really designed for high speed. So this is actually two models in one. Okay. Okay, so you can, you can play them all over here. No, no, there's two in the wing parts. Uh, yeah. Okay, and uh, just uh, in terms of uh, uh, structure, how strong is the wing? Can you... Uh, can you do steep banks? Uh, can you? Uh, what's the maximum uh, G that you can pull if you go into a dive? Uh, 
Um, uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, hesitant speaking in 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 maximum G's because we can also, of course, calculate and get a theoretical number, but uh, those numbers aren't really good for much in in in, uh, in real life. Regarding yeah. regarding the speed, when I did did this maximum dive test with maximum speed, I basically go 90 degrees down and full throttle and. Uh, at the end, I put maximum elevator, and uh, well, it holds. Uh, okay. it, it's it's a really really strong wing, in uh, in, uh, in the pitch. Uh, when you go around the pitch axis, it's very very strong. Okay. Uh, both the wing configurations, I would say, is very very strong in that in that sense. And uh, because of the added uh, carbon fiber strips in the wing panels, that's also very adds a lot of rigidity in an otherwise quite soft foam. Um, yeah. So, but of course, since the compared to a fully glued wing, uh, the the wings can actually rotate a little laterally. Uh, in the short wing, that doesn't really matter much. It it works very well. In the long wing, you can get some lateral movement in okay. higher speeds, but that's. And uh, just uh, uh, your your payloads. What, what is the design specifications for payload type? Um, would you use it as a uh, FPV plane? Um, and what's the maximum uh, weight that you can carry? Can you uh, put extra batteries on if you like endurance or something like that? Uh, I don't. Whoa, should we talk about the first initial weight and batteries we talked about? In the beginning, um, well, in the beginning we didn't think about bigger batteries at all, and that was, of course, before the X8, the Z2, and uh, a lot of um, the X7, a lot of wings. Uh, but recently, uh, I talked to a guy, and he has his RV jet. He flies with a short wing configuration, and it weighs eight pounds, all up weight. Uh, and that I would say is uh, I haven't tried it with that much weight. Um, mm. But I think he's quite happy. Okay. Sorry, I've, um, uh, I didn't get too much background information. I was actually on my way uh, to see Christian. <laughs> really dumped me into this. So um, uh, just, uh, I think that's why he also asked uh, no, the question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I was just told we have a pilot in South South Africa who's flying an jet with a the long wing, and just one battery, the one which we sell, the 10 amp hour, and he flies for an hour. For an hour, that's very, very impressive. For an hour. That's and that's not, it's not that big of a battery. Yeah, this battery here, it's, like, it's not that big. One battery. Yeah. yeah. I think, uh, we, I think if, if you should look at the, the, the benefits of this model compared to other, other models uh, that are on the market now for FPV, because there are quite quite a lot of good ones uh, on the market, but I think this this plane is probably the uh, one of the plane that has really been designed for FPV or FPV or used as a drone uh, as an uh, UAV. Uh, if you compare it to other planes that are on the market, which are of course also really good, uh, the right wing, for example, is is a good wing if you want to fly really fast. But it's it's compared with the RV jet, it it's not actually designed for carrying a lot of stuff. You don't have a big compartment in it, and also it's it's quite tedious to build. Uh, the RV jet is is really easy to build. I think that's one of the big benefits of it. It's it's really yeah, easy I, I to, to get started. I did see a blog post on Dennis of and the other guy. He just got his RV jet and he built it in what 20 minutes or so. Yeah. And he got the whole thing up and running for flying. Yeah, there's a pre-made pre slot for the RVOSD. You can put any camera in there, GoPro, GoPro 1, 2, or 3, any yeah. micro camera. And yeah. it, ha it has places for the video transmitter. So it's it's easier than others to build for FPV because yeah. we've thought about it for you. Now the other question is, what about aerial footage? Doing aerial surveying. Is there any plans to further another model designed for aerial survey? Because your, your plane is very, very well designed, I can see. And having it in the air, an hour in the air doing aerial surveillance, I mean, that will be 
Is there any plans or is it only FPV orientated that you're looking at right now? I don't know. Do you think there's a market for that? For a plane with a more downward facing camera? Yeah. That, that, that's why the X80 is so um, popular because they can stick a big camera just facing downwards and this thing just hangs in there. But again, it's a mission to build. It's a mission to get right. And the wings, they start flapping when you go too fast. You know, it's too much issues. Mm. I think if, um, if so the electronics were placed a little bit forward and the batteries in the electronic compartment, uh, I've seen a guy placing a camera downward facing in the foam nose because uh, this, the RV jet, it comes not only with a dome, with a plastic advanced dome, it also has a foam nose. And uh, that could easily be uh, modified for, for a downward facing camera. I, mm. Not a really, really, really big camera, though, but but um, I've seen uh, some compact cameras that would fit quite easily in the in the in the nose, phone nose, and also, of course, there's a bottom skid along the whole fuselage, which makes the the airframe really strong, the centerpiece, and uh, that, of course, might get in the way of downward facing camera, but that could be modified, of course, and uh, placed inside. Yeah. Yeah. So, what is the size of the plane? Yeah. It's 155 centi centimeters the short wing and uh, 195 centimeter wingspan with the long wing. Okay. Pretty, very practical. Mm -hmm. There's and, a new uh, review. I was going to say, there's a nice review on the RV Jet by Flight Test. They made the review and they showed the plane flat. I haven't seen it. I actually I need to go look at it. Yeah, and, and they show they show all kind of configuration, both configurations, long wing and short wing, flying. Yeah. Okay. And uh, availability. Um, I mean, uh, uh, do you have the plane ready? Can it be bought? Um, and uh, do you have sort of a production line going? So, sorry, can you repeat the question? No, I'm just I'm just asking in terms of availability. Um, is the plane already available? Um, is do you have a production line going? Yes, uh, they're, they're in stock already. Uh, we've been selling them for I don't know since April I think of the, of this year. Okay. Time flies. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Where do you make it? Do you have a different um, creator for this? Or do you make it in house, or did you create a, have a factory um, assembled for this? You mean, where do we manufacture it? Yes. The, the foam and the plastic. It's in China. China. Uh, so you've got you've got a creator there that makes the molds and put it together. And oh, of course, it's not. It this is our meat. We don't do it in here. This is all we got in Miami, but. Um, yeah, it's it's huge molds, really big things, uh, big, you need a real factory to do it, and with this low volume, we cannot. Yeah, okay. I, I think yeah, I think also yeah, of course the volume, uh, but but there are there are other other ones better doing that one that part, in the manufacturing. So I think it would be quite unwise to to try to uh, to start up that part in, in No, house. it's silly. Yeah, it's silly. <laughs> It's fun, yeah. but it's silly. Yeah. It's silly. Like I can say one thing about the protection of the RV yet. It's uh, most models they have a lot of plywood in them, and uh, with foam models. And uh, I think we we tried. Uh, it we, uh, maybe we put a little honor in it, not to use any wood, uh, only plastic and and uh, precision precision designed plastic parts uh, with very good fitting and, and also foam that would fit perfectly with each other and and also the third guy who's not here uh, he's very good and talented in, in uh, <coughs> design uh, spec specifications uh, to the factories and I think the of the models of course I'm biased but of the models I built uh, this is by far the one that has the best uh, um, well, the, the parts fit together really, really good. And that's uh, okay. I, I'm proud of that. It's it's been yeah. really good. Okay. And also the the design, um, the way we went about this project is, we didn't have a business plan or a budget, so we kind of 
just every part that we built, we went you know to the max. So the skid, the dome, everything was you know uh, trying to be perfected and not rush it. That's why we came out maybe uh, so with such a long delay. But when you read the comments from the people that say you know the parts are really well designed and engineered and they fit well, that's the result of you know spending so much time and money yes. on a lot of prototypes and testing it and not going with plywood. Yeah. Uh, I, saw, I saw your um, ad on RC Groups. I think it's almost a year before you released it. Isn't it that long? Because yeah. um, every time you used to enter RC Groups, you used to see big RV jet, RV jet. Yeah, that's and marketing. Six months or seven months afterwards, I saw maybe a year. I saw you guys only release it. You did a lot of pre-marketing, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think works. that's yeah, that's also a positive thing that people get to know it. But uh, also in in then I think it was also maybe creating a little bit frustration because people wanted it <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> yes. uh, they, they they got all these nice pictures, really really nice pictures with with parts and the prototypes and uh, yeah, I think it's yeah, good advertising, but also it must have been frustrating. I think. I think uh, maybe not going to all the details, but but it was not intentional delays. Uh, most no. of them. it was um, things that maybe well were out of our control. Uh, I, I at least as far as I know. Um, but I, I like to talk about one thing about the in the the design overall design of the model um, because uh, it it is quite easy to to build fast and it's. It's uh, made for design for FPV and UAV. But also one thing that I fought for during the design process, it was uh, that you should be able to modify it. Because FPVers and UAVers, they are, they are, um, they are, they, they often want to build their own stuff and, and modify it. And uh, so even though this is a very fast build, we have we have made it and designed it so it's easy to make good modifications yourself. For instance, under the wing, you have wing covers on the bottom, and it's very, very easy to route your own cable channels and make your own connectors, uh, embed them in the foam, and then just glue on the, the pockets or the lids, and, and it's all covered, and uh, you can't really see it. It's invisible installations, and the, the, the fuselage parts that you, uh, before you glue them together, you can route your own channels there. So they are, they are not really in the way afterwards. They are hidden. And um, so, I, so it's quite thick foam where it doesn't really need to be thick, but we wanted, well, extra foam can al always be good because you can always hide stuff there mm -hmm. and make uh, your own installations. So despite that it's really fast to build and, and quite straightforward, uh, it's possible to modify it. And we also. Yeah. Is the perfect motor for this plane? Excuse me? The perfect motor size. Uh, motor size. Uh, I think the, the Volvo had quite good the, the, the motor he picked. It may be a bit overpowered for the best efficient UAV model because that, I think it's 700 watts, the one it has. And uh, I think that might be too much power to be really super efficient. On the other hand, it's very, very fun. You can just push, push the throttle and go vertical, and it goes really well and fast. And uh, uh, I, th I think prop size, I think you should, with 3S battery, I think you should have a 12-inch prop. And uh, to be able to launch safely, I think it at least 300, 400 watts motor is, is good. Okay. I want to show. I want to show some of the things Simon was talking about in the model, if I can. Okay. Yes, please. So, this is the the foam nose, which yes. comes with it, and you can put the digital camera in it. Oh, okay. I see what you mean. Would you think a Canon A6 250 will fit in there? I see uh, a Canon A6 250 is a lot of is a famous brand. I know S S100 would fit, but I'm not familiar with that model. S100, Sony Next 5, you could make fit, but the S100 would fit. 
and inside this comes off as one piece. Um, this for the vibration mount where the OSD autopilot goes. This is you have channels which are routed for the wires for your elevons. Okay. And they go through, through here and these hatches the wire comes out. So you, it's all seamless. The bottom skid. And the motor mount, which is very strong. Yeah. Oh, that, that looks a bit stronger than your average motor mount. Why would one thing? Yeah. Uh, there's spots for some reinforcement, carbon square here, if you really want to make it strong. But it's really beefy. Around this midsection, it's really strong. There's actually, you can carve this foam away to make. Oh, sorry, this foam here to make more room for the battery because that's how I have my battery, which is a 10 amp hour 3S. Yeah, this, you have to carve on the sides there. Yeah. Carve on the sides, but it's still very strong, so it's not a problem. I think uh, that is actually one of the have been one of the big challenges when we designed this, and that is that we wanted both to have a small camera on the foam nose. We wanted to be able to use it with a with a GoPro within the pan tilt. So the, both both the, the pan tilt and the GoPro adds a lot of weight, so that was actually one of the large challenges to to be able to get the CG right, the center of gravity right, with all these different configurations. Yeah. yeah, that's probably the the biggest challenge because we had the the design requirement, as Anders said, was uh, use a wide variety of motors, both high performance and and very efficient, and very very lightweight in the front and very very heavy in the front, and still get that correct CG. It's uh, well, of course, and on flying wing, it's uh, they are often quite. Uh, you have to get the correct CG. But I think we got pretty good in the end. And of course, you can always uh, move around the batteries and so on to get the exact correct fit. But I think now we have a pretty good. It works. Well. Okay, just a question regarding the nose cone. Um, do you, I see it fits loose. Um, do you stick it with magnets or do you glue it permanently? Uh, in the front? Uh, it's, um, if you use the foam nose uh, and you want to use that permanently, then of course you can glue it. Uh, I usually use that as a trainer nose when I dial in the model just to make sure that I don't damage anything. <laughs> and I recommend newbies to do that as well. Uh, the pan tilt, the plastic uh, mount, the dome, that is. Uh, you can, of course, glue it to, but it's really good fit, and then you that you actually use screws to attach. And there's two manuals included. It's one for the airframe, and then it's one separate manual just for the pan tilt, because it's uh, quite advanced. That is yes. right. yeah, that's that's true. To the manual. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just to. Uh, to uh, explain more in detail, the, the pan tilt is not screwed into the foam. It's actually two parts uh, clamping around the foam. So it's two plastic parts clamping around the front of the foam part, so it holds together. So when you want to take it away, you just screw, unscrew the screws and you take it apart, and then it releases from the foam. Yeah, yeah screw holes on each side. Yeah. Okay, so there's actually there's two two nose cones. Um, yes, if I understand correctly. It's two two options, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And of course, uh, if you want, to, it's not that it, it's foam for not FPV and then the the pan tilt for FPV. I use the the foam nose and I have dug in a GoPro in front of it because I don't really like to use the pan tilt. Uh, I fly low and fast and then I don't have time to pan so. Then I'd rather have the GoPro just facing forward. Uh, okay. That's so actually it, quite, quite a good design. I, I'm sure a lot of people will be happy with a um, with a, a clear nose gun in front. 
um, you actually have a bit of nice airflow, um, yeah. you know, and protection. Yeah. And also uh, about the pan tilt and the nose cone, we have been working, or rather, uh, Frank, who, the 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 third guy in the design team, he he have been needing needed to work a lot with not getting reflections because that that's the tricky part when you use a dome. So the mm -hmm. the in inside part holding the camera has been designed so that it it don't uh, creates unnecessary reflections. But that that's yeah. also something that uh, is is quite unique for this design. A lot of a lot of uh, uh, people try to use a nose cone to to get the camera protected, but they 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 will will get a lot of reflections if yeah. you don't mount the camera in the right way. Okay. And of course, there's uh, this chrome reflective uh, dome, and if you use that with a GoPro, then you will get reflection if it's sunny outside. Uh, but this works very well when you use a CCTV camera like this. And uh, then you won't get any reflections at all, almost. And it's uh, it's basically because the camera is mounted really, really close to the dome, uh, so there's no room really for <laughs> reflections. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, and but many I've seen uh, they mount the cameras really far back, and then of course you will both get distortion and, and reflection. And many don't have uh, high quality domes either. And I think that's one of the uh, one of the main uh, negative things that are said with models to have nose domes is that, uh, well, the no domes will get scratched. And uh, we realized this in the beginning of the project when it shows to have a good nose dome. So uh, we thought, well, how, how, how should we do it? And uh, of course, we added a, a skid that protects it when you land on uh, hard surfaces. Okay. But if you land on grass, you will get scratches after a while because the grass is not perfectly soft. Uh, so uh, despite having really, really high quality domes, uh, the price is really low. The, I think, well, what's the clear ones? Like three bucks or something? So, yeah, three, three dollars. And this, the clear one, it's it's perfect with the GoPro. I, I get no reflections. Okay. It's the, 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 chrome, the chrome cool looking dome is the one that gives you reflections. But okay. if you use the standard dome, which is which you get with the Ivory Jet, uh, there's no reflections. It's yeah. or minimal, very minimal. You don't see them. Yeah. Uh, we talked about uh, downward facing camera. Uh, Simon, could you hold up the Ivory Jet from the side? So yes. Side uh, all the you see camera is, can actually yeah. uh, go perfectly uh, vertical, straight yeah. down. So as long okay. as you use the CCTV camera, that's small enough and uh, the fits in here um, of course the break can be adjusted if you have a deeper camera uh, then you can look straight down yeah. it's actually yes. already built in okay that's very, very interesting that's nice but I think uh, if you talk about the, the flight envelope which we talked a little bit about I think most people flying it, they get really surprised that it is that fast. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Tuesday here when, when the flight test released the review, they, I think I, even even I was uh, <laughs> amazed by how fast it looked in there. It, it, it goes really fast. <laughs> and it, it could climb really fast also. Uh, they got surprised that they were up on, yeah, a couple of hundred meters in just a couple of seconds. So it, it's a really, it, it really covers area fast. It's also because uh, they used, of course, the power pack, and it's powerful. So uh, yeah. you push throttle on it, you you will you will accelerate quite fast. But it can yeah. fly relatively slow, flying yeah. wing. So of course it. it, it yeah, know. this is the motor for the power pack. It's. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say the motor for the power pack is really over oversized. It's the biggest one um, we could find. That's you know reasonable because we tried to get more weight in the back of the plane so you could put heavy batteries in the yeah. in the front. But the, the power pack motor is very powerful, so you can. It's it's for 3s with a 12.6 prop. But I've heard guys running 4s on it and then calling me saying that uh, the the speed controller is you know going to thermal shutdown. But they were flying it on 4S, and the motor was fine. It's a really powerful motor. Now, just, just if it's uh, if it's flying that fast, um, 
is there a possibility of putting spoilers on the wing um, if you come and no, land? I think the landings are fine. Uh, it does. It doesn't. It doesn't like to tip stall. So as long, you know, it it does come in a bit fast with the short wings. But with the long wings, it's really gentle. But with the short wings, you have to plan your your approach. But it's not going to stall as easily. So it's yeah. it's a nice plane to land. Yeah. Uh, would it be possible to to modify uh, the the uh, ailerons to put flaps or use it as flaps, part of it as flaps? I don't know flaps, how it's flaps on the, I don't think flaps on a wing is a good idea uh, on a delta wing. Uh, but you could use the rudders, the fins, the the the, the rear part of the fins as uh, air brake, for example, yes. turning them outwards. Okay. Yes. Uh, so, is it actually? Uh, um, uh, I I can't see it uh, clearly. Um, but uh, how would you it, would you cut it and put two two uh, servos in? Um, if you want to make the air brakes. Yes. Yes. Yeah, uh, when we designed the fins, uh, I didn't actually think of, of speed brakes. But we we place them quite, so they extend quite a bit from the trailing edge, okay. and uh, that makes enables the use of rudders. We didn't put rudders in the model because uh, not everyone will use them. It will make for an overly complex model if not everyone uses them. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's very very easy modif modification. Just cut them off basically and and place the hinge and embed a servo in the in the yes. fin because it's quite Thick or on the uh, on the wing, yeah. and uh, then you can use uh, them as speed brakes, not really air brakes. They won't they won't reduce the lift, uh, but they will reduce the speed quite efficiently if you place them both outwards. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, but I don't uh, think it's uh, it's too fast this model. I think I've land uh, I landed in around. 40 kilometers per hour or something, and uh, since, like Wawa said, it doesn't really tip stall. You you won't get in a spiral dive, the death spiral, because because of the washout. So you can actually fly it in a stall in a turn, and it will just dip the nose a little bit, gain speed, and dip the nose even if we fly it in a turn. So it won't enter a spin, and it won't enter a death spiral on your landing uh, run. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I just want to mention, I actually had quite a lot of problems in the beginning uh, landing it uh, because I was not used to fly that slow when I land a wing because uh, you really you really need to fly it slowly, uh, sure. but you, you're not used to that because you, you feel like, oh no, it will tip stall. So I often try to land with a too high speed <laughs> before I learned how to land it, so it, it can be tricky, but I think Comparing uh, an ordinary plane with a, a stab and a fin uh, and, a, and a complete fuselage, uh, a, being, a wing is different to fly than an ordinary plane, I think. Yeah. So um, you have to have that in mind when you when you buy a flying wing. Yeah. Uh, just just in terms of pr uh, practical sight, um, the, the, the box sizes and that. If I want to ship it, uh, I know. Uh, to South Africa can be can be tricky because of the, the sizes can be quite expensive. Uh, what is the, the box size you, you ship it in? And the weight. I, I think yeah. it's uh, diagonally. I think it's about a meter. It's a rectangle yes. box, and the weight I think uh, around eight pounds. But uh, we have some tricks to send it to to places like Russia and South Africa. I think. But we have a guy that works on this 24 hours a day, and he finds the best way to to ship it to you. And there's some, you know, cracks in the USPS system which uh, we use to your advantage if you want to ship, buy an RV jet, uh, because, it, you know, yeah, we do our best. So if there's a way, we send it to you. But I think a hundred hundred dollars for shipping to South Africa is what what the cost is, and it gets there in three days. It's the global express global express guaranteed service. So three days, yeah. hundred dollars to okay. Europe, seventy dollars uh, to the United States. I think we have free shipping to the United States. Yeah, so. I think it's sixty to Sweden. So oh yeah, even cheaper. Yeah, and also uh, regarding the, the the box size. It is it is not super big, but it's quite big. And uh, 
one reason for that is because I really wanted the the the, the box to to double up as a transport case when you build the model. Most models just come in and the the the, the foam pieces are thrown in a, in a box and uh, mm -hmm. mostly the all the foam pieces have dents and they are broken. So you, you before building you need to start with the repairs. We didn't want that. We wanted a uh, transport sec secured uh, model, and also that the model can be s safely stored in in the box and during transport when you have already built it and installed it. So that's one reason why it's uh, a little bit larger. But uh, I think uh, it came out pretty good. The box also. Dennis just told me that uh, even South Africa priority mail is from sixty to seventy dollars. So much? Uh, Seventy. Seventy dollars. Seventy dollars. That's not bad. Yeah. I'll be putting one on my list. <laughs> now, uh, do you have any future plans? Something to? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably top secret. <laughs> wait, wait for this to work. Yeah. Yeah. There are a lot of lot of. Uh, a lot of ideas. Yeah, there's, we're always talking something, drawing something on the board, but yeah, yeah we 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 shouldn't go public uh, early because of several reasons, of course. Uh, there's yeah, people people have been hounding you for it, you know. Yeah. Hey, what are you saying on the show? We want it. Let's let's have it. Let's have it. <laughs> we, we could say we could say like this. Uh, I think that one one really good thing about this project has been that uh, as we are three guys sitting in Sweden, uh, Bova has visited visited Sweden. I think it's two times now. We have a special place where we meet and then uh, eat good. <laughs> Fly good uh, and and uh, get all new ideas and, and try to solve them. So I think that's that has been really good. And we had a meeting quite uh, lately here, so uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So yeah, there there's a lot going on. Yes. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else you want to say to us? Uh, our VOSD is going to be in stock soon, I hope. So stop, stop asking, please. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? I think that's pretty much the, the most important thing. Yeah. So sorry, just uh, where, where do you order? Where, where do you place your orders? This is rangevideo.com. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a website, right? Yeah. www.rangevideo.com. Yeah, and if somebody wants to do like some nice footage or reviews of every jet, we send them out for free. Um, as long as you do an unbiased, honest review, <laughs> and you make a nice footage, yeah, we'll send you an every jet. Sure. Yeah. Okay, guys. Do, yeah. Thank you very much. It was great talking to you guys. Thank you. We, yeah. we Thank learned you. really a lot about your every jet, and hope to see you in the air. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Keep on. Thank you.